Welcome to an enlightened hour of interactive talk. This is Guided Spirit Conversations with host Marla Goldberg. In this program, we spotlight guests from all over the globe who have helped others change their lives and will provide you with the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to help you make a difference in your own life. Now, here is Marla Goldberg. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Guided Spirit Conversations. I'm Marla Goldberg, and I am so excited to have you here today. This is our Christmas Eve edition, and it, you know, it only happens once every six years, so I'm so pleased that I'm able to be with you on this special holy day. Many of you are familiar with this week's guest. She has been in the public eye for most of her adult life as an actress and an activist. What you may not be aware of is the spiritual journey that she began many years ago and how her life has transformed from her quest. Today, Kelly Rutherford and I will be talking about her sacred journey, the catalyst that sprung Kelly on her path, where it began, some of the practices she's learned and how she brings it into her daily life and how those daily practices have reshaped the life she's leading today. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you're here. It's, um, I'm really honored and pleased. What I'd like to do all the time is start at the beginning. Okay. When did you start going down this path? What was the catalyst that, that brought you down your spiritual road? Um, well, I mean, I think we all have it as children. We just, it's not really talked about. I mean, in different families, I suppose it is, but it's, um, it's, there's a sense of magic that I think all children have a sense of spirituality, a sense, a sense of awareness of another realm or, or uh, an understanding. So, um, so I remember a lot of that as a kid, but not knowing how to, uh, you know, how to express it or talk about it. My mom was great because she probably like in my teenage years, you know, gave me some books by Shakti Gawain, like creative visualization and, and things like that, which really helped and, and Louise Hay and affirmations and everything. I'm going to have to geek out on my glasses so I can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's was, you know, from like my memory, early memories of all of that. And then you know, you go through life and you go to school and you deal with kids and you deal with stuff and you want to fit in and you kind of get off your, you know, out of alignment really yes. with your, your path and, and trying to please everyone, please your parents, please the teachers and your friends in society and fit in to the, the, um, the norm. So, you know, and then I think we, not everyone, but we all go through t something like that uh, in this certain program that we're in. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, things happen that you just can't do it anymore. You just can't, you just, you know, you have things that happen in your life that just sort of challenge you. Yeah, that challenge you and evolve you and, and wake you up a bit and say, you know, this is not where it's at, where it's at is, is going within and surrendering and letting go and, you know, not, not, um, and, and, and allowing, you know. So did you have an experience that sort of reawakened your, um, realization that there's something else out there that can help you balance your life, shift your life, or change whatever was going on? Yeah, a lot of it was, um, I love really love Abraham Hicks. Yes. So Esther Hicks was 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 really helpful during my most challenging times. Um, it really really helped me a lot. Um, at, before that, it was always it was much more about manifesting what I wanted or manifestation that I was interested in. Like so many of us, you know, it's like how do I manifest this or that or yes. Um, and then it became more about you know, being in alignment with, with who I really am and, and love. And it became a lot, I've always been about love. I think that's always been a real through line in my life and been that aware of the, of the need for that or seeing the need for that in everyone around me, you know, you know, where even as a child, just like, why aren't these people just coming from love? Like what's, what's up? Why are they also stressed out and 
of trying to be so many different things for everyone and you know just feeling kind of like it's really about love you know and something we need a lot more of today because we have a lot of healing to do yeah but going back to it so it was so as an adult because we know the teenage and and I love the Shakti Guan book because that was one of my early books as well. Yeah. Was, the, you know, when you had whatever it was, whatever situation, because I don't, we don't need to rehash what the what is. It's more about, was there a certain thing that you tried? Like a lot of people go to Reiki, you mm -hmm. know, the, either as a receiver or they say, oh, I'm going to learn this so I can help myself or others. Was, what was your first, um, as an adult, modality or technique that, that started you wanting to learn more, wanting to bring it into your life? I think realizing that, um, that fighting something that seems much bigger than we are, um, and, you know, when you're fighting something that... Um, is is harming you you know what i mean where you're physically being you know whether it's financially physically psychologically you know you you fight and you fight and you fight and particularly if it's something like your children you fight in particular um but what you realize is that you know there are systems in place <laughs> so you yes. you can't take on the whole system right you can't take on the whole thing and so or necessarily even an individual who is motivated you know uh, uh from a, in a in a different way in a different operating system than you are you know coming from a very different different place frequency so what happened was it was just a matter of realizing that I had to let go. I mean, if I was going to physically survive, mentally survive, financially, I was, you know, had spent everything. So it was more about, okay, I've done everything I can do. And so I have to just let go. And so I think sometimes in that letting go, I think that's what happens with all of us when we're challenged, you know, as you, you hold on, you hold on you know, you, you try different things and, and sometimes the best thing you can do is, is take your attention away from it, let go of it, let go of the rope, you know, that you're being pulled by in whatever that challenge is. And to be able to say, okay, I'm going to take my attention away from it. I need to find the joy, realign with who I really am. Um, and stop judging the situation, the person, the whole thing just it's taken too much of my life force to do that and re re realign yourself refocus yourself reprioritize yourself and and so that's you know you realize because you reach a certain point you, you can no longer do it right you know the thing whatever it is you know i do know um, <laughs> yes <laughs> so first hand like, i know <laughs> Right. So, and yes. the alternative, somebody asked me today, you know, why are you so uplifting and pot? And I said, because the alternative is not fun. I mean, you know, the alternative, which is to, to be the victim, to, you know, live in this resistance place or judgment place or any, you know, anywhere that you're not in love, you know, in a loving space, an right. alkaline loving space is, you know, not really in alignment, right? So it's it's just sort of remembering that and allowing that and trusting that. So that's great. So all, I mean, did, did you read books? Did you follow anyone? Was there anybody special that you resonated with? Yeah, I followed a lot of people on Instagram. So it was kind of the beginning of that, you know, time. So I kind of found my my people, you know, not intentionally, just sort of, you know, you you dive in. And and then, of course, yeah, there were books. Again, I think Abraham Hicks probably was the most helpful. I read a book called Bringers of the Dawn. Uh, Barbara, um, what is it? Uh, Mar Marcianic, I think is what it is, about the Palladians. It's an interesting, interesting thing. So just, it just you know, a bigger global view, a bigger view of things. Yeah. And it's interesting how that happens because we, we, the majority of us who wake up, you know, or are shook awake 
um, because our circumstances, you know, just, I, I can tell you, I was brought to my knees during my divorce and it was brutal and it was, it was arduous and painful. And I just swore to myself, I was just not going to break. I, you know, I get, ended up being fractured, but not broken. And mm -hmm. in the process, I started going to my first mystery school. So for me, it was, you know, learning to heal myself because nothing else in my world was working and I needed something else because I knew there was more. Mm -hmm. There's just more. So you, when did you begin to feel the shift though happening in your life? So, you know, a lot of times, um, like I'll just share, I had a gratitude practice and I do this when I walk my dog. I look like a crazy woman who talks to herself because I do my prayers and I do my gratitude. And then one day I realized like, I'm always happy. I'm always singing. And I feel like I'm walking on a cloud on a daily basis. And it was mm -hmm. just this big epiphany because it was so subtle, the shift. Do you remember when your epiphany came, when you realized that you were released, you surrendered, and now all of the, the you know this beautiful energy was coming to you? Well, I think like you, it's it's a practice. You know, it really is a practice of of being in gratitude and making those lists. And even when you think nothing in your life is working, if you sit down and make a gratitude list, you realize that there's a lot of good stuff in your life, even at the worst, right? Even And Absolutely. so that sort of starts the shift. Um, and again, just, you know, filling your mind and your space and your energy field with, with good energy. You know, it's like not watching the news and not taking in all this, this negative stuff and really everything is a program, right? So we've learned things from the time we were children that, you know, that's just what we were taught. Is it all true? We don't know. Right? right. But so we may as well, some of it probably is, some of it probably is other people's beliefs and ideas. And, you know, we just kind of took it as our own and whatever. Right. So we may as well reprogram ourselves in, a, in which is kind of what you're talking about when you're walking the dog, which is I need to, I want to reprogram my subconscious mind to believe that in what I want to believe in and feel the way I want to feel and, and live in, the world in which I can create my own reality. So it's it's a relearning. Everything that we are, we've learned along the way. So to to sort of do it for ourselves is really um, an important thing. And I think affirmations do that. You know, surrounding yourself with with people on, on the same frequency that are that are evolving and and um, it's it's important. You know. Do you also receive energy work from outside practitioners? I have intuitive friends that I've talked to over the years. Just, I relate. I mean, I think if you're an empath and you're intuitive yourself, you relate to, to people that, that possess that maybe and even, you know, yeah. So I have, and I've done, I've done, I haven't done a lot of physical energy work other than yoga, but I mean, in massage and that kind of thing, but definitely worked with healers. Yeah. Over, over um, different different you know, things. parts of your you know, parts of your life you, you... <laughs> along the way but I'm from LA so everyone was doing that when I was you know yeah everyone's been in into into that for years you know yeah you know, well-being but, but not everybody not everybody embraces it some people talk about it they just don't walk it right and some people right. walk it and they try absolutely everything that there is you know so you have all kinds and LA is a very interesting place and it's um the one thing about LA, the energy there is open and receptive, mm. as is all of the West Coast I've found. You go to the West Coast and the East Coast, and it's very open, and maybe because it, the, oh, the water lines it. Yeah. But like you go to a place like Chicago, and the energy is much denser. Yeah. And they're more skeptical. So yeah. To get people to open up and be receptive towards energy work is not as uh, fluid mm -hmm. as, let's say, the East or West Coast. Because you go right. to New York and there's a ton as well. Yeah. Yeah. Different energies, different places for sure. Absolutely. And so um, I'm like, you have children. I don't want to, we're about to take a break. So you know what? Let's take our break now. We'll come back on the other side and we'll talk about how you, you know, your children and, and if you share and your practices with them and how they're doing with it, if you do. Okay. Okay. Okay, great.
All right, all clear. Thank you. Okay. Phew. So how do you do the break thing? I've never done a break on a podcast. So how does it work? So I have a break. Because um, it's not live, right? Or is it, it just? Well, normally just, the podcast is live. Ah, okay. That's and why you so, take a break. Exactly. It, and it's a call-in show. So people call in. Ah, okay. But in this particular case, the way it was structured, this was the best time for you. So, okay, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and accommodate. Okay, gosh. Okay, good. And so then Aaron will come back and say, okay, we're going to start again and okay, we'll good. go through the next part of it. So, yeah. So fun. So, how often do you record? Once a week, every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Oh, good. Okay. So, we stream, live, we stream live on Facebook. So, we have the audio part and then we have the visual. All That's right. Great. I am ready for the next segment if you are. Okay. Are you counting down? Yep. Here we go. In Thank you. Four. Three, two. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, I'm really thrilled to share with you that I'm talking to Kelly Rutherford today. And Kelly, you know from her, her stints as an actress in her life, and she's an activist and a mother, and she started a spiritual path a number of years ago, and we're talking about her path, how she got here, and what she does. And how it transformed her life. So welcome back, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. So before we took the break, we were talking, I, I mentioned your children. So you have a practice. You believe in gratitude. You believe in, in I call it love breathing, because, you know, you, you, you want to be in a place of, of love and joy. And, mm. you know, you breathe it in, you breathe it out, you share it. Mm. Your children, do they... No, are they aware of your gratitude practices and the other practices that you do? And if they are, do they incorporate it into their lives? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the best thing we can do is be an example, you know, with the kids, especially because yes. you try to tell them and it's sort of like, you know, you get eye rolls and all sorts <laughs> of things. At a certain age, you're just like, so I, you know, I always find that the best way is, is to, to, sh you know, be an example of, of, of that for, you know, them. And, and also, you know, most of what I do with my kids is just honor them. You know, I mean, my, my big thing is that, you know, we really more and more need to j just focus on honoring our children and they're, they come in with the upgrade, you know, we're an old operating system as much as we, we yeah. keep, you know, doing our best to keep up, but you know, they come in knowing so much. And I, I think that I do my best to, to respect and honor them. That doesn't mean I'm not their mom and I'm, you know, but, um, you know, I always talk about love and kindness, you know, with them and, and how we relate to each other and sort of having an understanding of other people. Even just the other day, we were talking about getting frustrated, just walking down the street and how some people are slow and some people are this. And, I said, yeah, I said, well, just, you know, everyone's at their own pace, you know? And I said, you know, all this judgment and getting frustrated and this and that, I said, we don't know what somebody else is going through. I said, what if you found out that they, you know, had just gone through a huge thing in their life and there you are being, you know, upset with them for walking slowly down the street or something, you know, I mean, it's just, and it's how we use our energy. It's like, are you going to use your energy for that? Or you're going to use your energy to bless that person as you walk by and say, okay, you know, aren't I fortunate that I can walk by and I can walk fast and that, you know, I'm young and healthy and, you know, and it's just, you know, I think instead of judging people, we should be blessing them silently, you know, just bless everyone along our path because I think the world can look much different. I think this whole sort of a lower frequency, and I think we're feeling it more and more this really relating to energy um, yes. more than anything else, more than where we're from, uh, what we look like, because, you know, nothing is really as it seems. I think we're, we're all getting to realize that. So, you know, these sort of broad judgments or, or broad, I don't know, you know, about people is, yes. is very limiting belief. So it's, it's, it's just limiting, you know, to say that all, people of this from this place or that religion or this color or this whatever i mean or it's this political just, belief. i think it keeps us locked in a in a certain vibration that is is um sometimes orchestrated 
Um, and I think it's, it's probably better for us to just say, you know what, I, each individual ha carries their own frequency and their own energy, and that's what I relate to. And what you find is you just don't even attract people anymore that aren't of a certain frequency and aren't in a certain harmony with you. If you stop judging, it's almost like the judging attracts more of it and creates, it you know, it keeps you, again, it keeps you locked in it. So anyway, it, it hasn't really throughout history done us much good so, so far. So I think that just judging people on, based on each person's energy is, is, um, frees our energy up a lot more. You're hundred percent correct. I believe the same thing. And at least you're correct in my book <laughs> so, <laughs> because I can't say for every, but I believe the same thing and like meets where like is. So did you ever notice there's somebody who's always having issues over and over and over again, and they keep having the same issues. But when you break through and you start shifting your belief system, your, your perspectives and you raise your vibration, you, it, it, everything that comes to you raises as well. Yeah. That's yeah. the benefit. It's the benefit. It's, it's, and that's why I talk about, you know, now's the time to heal. We're in a birthing process, you know? So um, I don't know if you've heard of Deirdre Hayde, but uh, mm -hmm. her husband is Will Arnst. He's the man who created What the Bleep Do We Know? And the oh, I love that movie. I know. Wasn't that great? Yeah. Wasn't Joe Dispenza in that movie too? Did, wasn't he one of the people that spoke in that movie? And he's so great. I think so. He yes. is. He's wonderful. And so she put it beautifully. Like right now we're like in the birth canal of the birthing process. So mm -hmm. it's, now I have never had my own child. So mm. I haven't experienced that, but I hear it's, you know, painful and it's dark and it's bloody and, and, you know, you're, you're trying to push this boulder out of you <laughs> and this little yeah. human boulder. Yeah. And then, but then the, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that a lot of my metaphysical friends and I, we're looking forward to 2021 because it's the you know more light the veils are lifting more light we're coming into a new mm -hmm. place and in being so the vibration will lift again i truly believe that and a yeah. lot of the, the the negative stuff that we're dealing with will fall away and speaking mm -hmm. of falling away when you started shifting your perspectives in life did things start changing for you personally and professionally. Yeah. I mean, it's an ongoing process, isn't it? I mean, it just, yes. it evolves, right? And you just keep kind of realigning with, with different things and people and information. And um, it's, a, it's kind of a subtle thing, really. You know, all of a sudden you look around and you go, wow, I don't have all that, the drama I used to have in my life. And I'm, you know, and in the beginning, you're so used to it. Right. You know, you're it's almost like you're used to things being and operating and or feeling a certain way. So it takes a minute and, you know, you also, you go up and down, you know, sometimes you, you, you feel like you've, you know, made this, these sort of leaps and then the universe will come and show you to remind you that you have, you know, and, and to sort of bring different things up again. But um, I don't think there's this ever this overnight thing i think it's really gradual and it's i mean for some people maybe it's an overnight thing or they have a, a spiritual awakening in, in in some very you know in one mo in a moment or something but mine's been a very you know just evolving it's it's always evolving and depending on you know where i put my focus and how much time i i real I, I take to connect up but what i find now is that you know for the most part when you get rid of all the sort of boundaries of things or limited ideas of how it should be done, mm -hmm. like, oh, I have to meditate in this way or I have to be spiritual in this way or that way, that you find that you're just in it all the time. You, you're more in it constantly than not. It's almost like you, you shift back into 3D or you go, you know, there, we've been talking a lot about 5, 5D and, and yeah. 3D. And, um, it's really the more you create your own reality, um, the less you rely on outside things, you know. And so, of course, it's shifted my perspective on on my work, my life, my family life, my you know how I see myself in the world. Um, and there's a lot more trust. There's a lot. Not that I don't worry like every parent or worry like every professional person, you know, have have a sense of that. 
but there is there's less of that and more trusting and allowing um trusting that things uh, that things are aligning and they do the next right thing will will align and it does you know it does align i agree and it just it's amazing the epiphanies that happen they're like like you said they're subtle but they're there you know and yes from I'll, i can only talk from my experience but for me when i started raising up like that it was amazing who kept dropping out of my life mm -hmm. and the more they dropped the more peaceful it became the more joyful it became mm -hmm. and now you know when people say this has been a really hard year i you know i could say i can understand that but for me it hasn't been hard because I've been in my place and I, I do my practice and I stay, I stay elevated. And if I'm feeling like one of those down days, I just throw on that music and I start singing mm -hmm. my brains out. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> it does help. I'm, I hope nobody's around to hear it because it hurt their ears, but it makes me feel great. Right. Right. <laughs> so, totally. totally. So, in learning these new processes, have you found um, more opportunities coming to you because you're you're vibing higher and and it just seems like just things fall into your lap more synchronistically than they used to. It's not a struggle to get what you might work, for example. Yeah, in different ways, like because I think you know what you think you want and what you really want may be very different vibrationally, right? So we yes. think like, oh, I want this car, or I want this thing, or let's say it's just a material things, or you want to, serve, you know. But what you learn to trust is that everything you need and uh, does show up. You know, it's funny. It's like again it's like not having to limit what it is even you know it's like if you need a car it shows up if you need a place here you need a thing you know you and you're always sort of uh, in, in a more guided place i guess you could say which which takes you know trust and a leap of faith um and it 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 may not always look the way you thought it would look but it feels the way you want to feel if that makes sense like absolutely like it's more the connection to how do I want to feel um, if, if, what if all my needs are provided for, do you know what I mean? Yes. What is it? What is it that I ultimately want to feel? And, and that's what, what has, has been the big shift is feeling more in harmony, feeling more peaceful, um, feeling more abundant in maybe different ways or finding, um, you know, joy in different things than maybe I did before. So, you know. I understand totally. And I, I think everybody out there understands that. And, and here's the thing. I, I feel that the needs that you want change. That You know, you want the need of nature, the need mm -hmm. of hearing children laugh. You know, mm -hmm. simple things like that bring you so much joy where to me now a car is a mode of transportation. Mm -hmm. And my husband just bought a new car and, and we were going through it. And I said, at the end of the day, it's a car. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a way yeah. to get you from A to B to C and, and you go from there because we're in my younger days, you know, I wanted and I wanted and I wanted, but now my wants are just different. I just want yeah. healing. I want people to have the comfort and love that they need and want and desire things like that, mm -hmm. which I think resonate with, what um you were saying totally totally it does and you know it, it's it's you know you can still appreciate beautiful i mean like a beautiful car or a beautiful thing you know it's it's yes but and i think you know again like you said you know when you're younger it's it's and you know we're infinitely creative beings right it's just what do you want to create and you know maybe once you've had those cars and you've had the nice things and you've done that you know, you, you realize that they're beautiful, but yes. what is it? And if, is it about beauty? For me, it's, I mean, for most of the manifesting I've done really has been about beauty. I just love beautiful things. <laughs> so, it like on, on, surprise me. on the material side of things, I love fashion. I love art. I love beautiful things. I love, 
connection, but you know, it all is, is connected, right? It's all. It is connected. It, but you do yeah. have, you do have pattern. So I did take, take the liberty of checking your birth date. And so I do a, a modality called Chinese face reading and part of it, there's numbers. And so one of your patterns is about beauty and aesthetics and you're, you're a great people person and you, it's really important to you that whoever comes into your space feels good and comfortable. Mm -hmm, like for sure. You would be the best hostess on the Titanic. So as the ship's oh, going no. down, you've got you've got hors d'oeuvres going, violins playing, uh, <laughs> and, oh my and God. you're making everybody feel comfortable and yeah. just having a good time. Yeah, I'd be like, I'll see you on the other side. It'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. Let's find a place to meet. It'll be okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I had noticed you're always wearing like beige or light colors, which mm. also supports what I'm talking about in terms of preferences. Yeah. So, and you're also highly intuitive. I'm not quite sure if you're mm. aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. I more and more as I've gotten older, I, I'm, I'm more aware of what that is. I've always had it, but you know, you don't always know, you know, I think right. my kids have it too. And so I'm trying to talk with them about it a bit. Kids are more apt to oh. have it because the vials are lifting for the children. The children that are mm -hmm. coming in today are just more sensitive more intuitive, you know, 10 totally. years, 20 years, old, they were talking about the crystal children, the indigos. Yeah. And now they're getting even more sensitive to that. And so, yeah, it's not surprising at all about it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so, so cool. I didn't mean to just sort of like throw you into that, but I love it. I love it. It's wonderful. So, but yeah, it's just part of your pattern and people do migrate to you. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? you tend to be the nucleus around your fr your your friends and family it depends like my brother is so charismatic and fun i mean my brother we'd go somewhere and if he wasn't there everybody would say where's anthony where's anthony you know he's much more outgoing and charismatic i tend to be more quiet and sort of i'm okay on my own you know i don't need mm -hmm. a big social life but i do have a tendency to want everyone to feel loved and you know feel good. Do you know what I mean? That's, Absolutely. that's for sure. And I do, I do. Yes. In that way I do. I think, um, yeah, have that experience with my family and people around me for sure. Which is great. Well, I believe sure. it's time for another break. So hang ah, tight okay. and we'll be right back. All right. We're clear. Thank you. So, yeah, I was looking at your, at your patterns and it was very interesting. So um, cool. How do you do it? Um, how does it work? Well, first of all, your facial features, how large, how small, where they're placed, they tell one story. And then uh -huh. your birth date has a pattern. So the pattern is your, all, your overall um, Number. personality. Okay. Then you have how you deal with things and stress and then your core issues. But in your core issues, um, which is about, you know, it's about not enough. So mm. there's either a tendency to be a minimalist or you tend to migrate to keeping things because you're worried there's not going to be enough. There's not going to be enough, but it doesn't mm. have to be things. It could be a not, not enough love and not enough attention, not enough this. And that doesn't, it doesn't feel right where you are. I'm not right. feeling that for you. Yes. Oh, but I was just letting you know I'm, I'm going to save it if you're ready. If not, no worries. Oh, okay. We, I mean, you ready to go back, Kelly? Sure. Okay. <laughs> we can go back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. Final segment. 16 minutes in four, three, two. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. If you've just tuned in, I'm talking with Kelly Rutherford, and we're talking about her spiritual path, you know, her beliefs, her practices, and how she's integrated them in her personal life with her children. So welcome back, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. So it's charity shout out time. And so your charity is Free Arts New York. Can you talk about that and why it's so near and dear to you? Yeah, I, I went to a lot of their events when I was living in New York and it was really like inner city kid, it, you know, bringing, exposing inner city kids to art and art classes and all these things because they had taken so many of them out of the schools and, and such. So it's, um, it's, I, I love art and I think it makes such a difference when you're growing up having that outlet, yes. you know, having that place to go. Hey, my love. Um, having that place to go. So, you know, 
anyway, it was, it was something I really loved the group and they'd pick an artist each year and all the kids would go and work with this artist. And it was, it was just really cool that, and, and there's, there was another one step up women's network, which is, is a wonderful organization, which is all about, you know, it started many years ago. I think it was like, not many, like 14, 15 years ago or something. And, um, really about women mentoring women and helping each other in business and, and doing all of that. So that was a, also another great organization. That sounds that wonderful. I, the, I think it's so important that women help women. Women support yeah. women. Yeah, you because know, so many people don't know where to go, what to do, how to do it. And when somebody who knows how to do can just change the trajectory of someone's life so easily. Well, I think that's true sure. feminism. I mean, I, you know, we talk about feminism. I think that's what it is. It's it's waking up and just realizing, hey, it's about women supporting women. It's not about blaming. It's not about, you know, you can't live in the past. You have to move forward and support each other and uplift each other. And, and we're our greatest resource, you know, and then the men want to get involved because you're successful. <laughs> 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 they show up like, wait a minute, what are you guys doing over here? You know, so it's, it's really, um, it's a, yeah, that's to me what true feminism is, 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 is women helping other women and us doing that with each other. Well, the feminine is about sure. support, nurturing, guidance. Totally. So feminism coming from that, it, it's the natural offshoot. It's just, yeah. you know, back in the 80s, feminism was more about breaking the glass ceiling and women yeah. started turning into men mm -hmm. in a sense. You know, they started putting their feminine side aside because they yeah. tried to compete with a man on a man's level. And I'm wondering if we go, if we ever did a movie and you go back in time and you change it and you used it with, with using feminine wiles. Yeah. You know, if it wouldn't have happened sooner or easier. Well, that's where, where we're our most powerful, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, for so sure. what are your tips for living a happy and fulfilling life? Hmm. I, I think a lot of it is minding your own business, you know? A lot of it is just doing doing what you need to do for you, you know what I mean, for sure, uh, so that you are centered enough in love that you can be present for others. So, um, and, you know, we've taken this whole self-care movement to another <laughs> level or self-love <laughs> thing. But what I mean is really, if you're being true to yourself and taking time for yourself and, and like you talked about early on healing, you know, what needs to heal and that's an ongoing process is not something that happens today or tomorrow or whatever, but just staying in alignment with um, whatever it is that, that keeps you in that loving place, you know, whether it's what you're talking about affirmations and, or, listening to, to things that are inspiring to you, reading books that are inspiring to you and, and just sort of eliminating all the things that aren't, you know, it's like, how do you, part of it is just saying, okay, I'm, I'm choosing to, I'm choosing what comes in and out of my life and, and what I'm reading and what I'm watching and where I'm putting my focus for and sure. And it sounds like you've learned that choosing may having, knowing that you have choice in everything you do makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Even not choosing is a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it oh. sounds like you've got your arms around that one. Yeah, it is. It's, it's choosing our thoughts. You know, when we start to feel bad, we can, we can usually trace it right back to some thoughts that we were thinking or something we just watched or a conversation that we had. So it's really just being aware of, of, how we feel when we're around certain people, how, um, and also bringing energy with us. So, you know, a lot of our power is in um, realizing that we, what we're creating. So if you're in, a, in having a conversation with someone and it's, it's negative, let's say, or it's, it's talking about something that you're not that crazy to talk about, you can shift, shift the conversation, shift the energy. That's your power. You know, that is your power. That is within your control to say, you know, shift the focus onto something else, you know, for yourself and for that person, you know, uplift, you know, we can kind of go down the road with each other and, and 
I, I call them algorithms, right? You could, you could go down an algorithm with someone. So, you know, let's, if you, if you keep up and, you know, where we're coming from is, is about seeing people be happy and succeed and wanting that for people and blessing people, you realize it comes back to you so in, in so many ways, you know, yes. whereas if you, if you're judging or you're in a, in a space of, of, uh, negativity yeah or just not being with someone in terms of energy right you're not judging them just based on energy then you're you're you see it in your life how it plays out so it's just it's just a, a more optimal place to come from i think it's gratitude and blessing everyone and i love that i yes yeah. i agree with the gratitude i agree with the you know choosing to not put yourself in situations that are going to keep you stuck and mm -hmm. choosing to get out and move to a higher, I'll call them vibration. You can call them algorithms, but it's the same, yeah. however you look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. And I love the part about not <clears throat> judging because, you know, society judges. We've just gone mm -hmm. through how many years of judgment, you know, mm -hmm. being a role model, not mm -hmm. a my role model, but, you know, role model for people who, haven't awakened yet and knowing that if you put the judgment aside and you just accept things for who they are where they are and mm -hmm. at what level they are because like you said at the beginning of the show nobody knows what somebody else is going through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so much of it's just seeing it you know it's like you don't even have to say anything sometimes it's just you know if you see something that is you know even with your kids or your spouse or at work you know, that doesn't feel in the line. It's just, it's just almost sitting in awareness of it and allowing it to pass through. It's interesting. I, I did, my mom had said something to me and I thought, oh, wow, wow, whoa, you know, <laughs> just off the cuff, not meaning to, you know, she's, but, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to let that go. I mean, it, I probably in the past would have challenged her on it or said, what is, what did that mean? Or this or that. And so I just thought, oh, that was, that's interesting. Okay, I'm just going to be aware of that and let that just be. You know what I mean? And it's interesting. She called me a couple hours later and said, I don't know why I even said that to you the other day. I was just thinking about this or that. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. I love you and blah, blah, blah. So it's interesting how if you create space, people kind of get it, you know, themselves. We don't have to say so much and point so many things out. Um, and it really depletes our own energy engaging that way. Sometimes just an awareness of things shifts things. It does. It does. And I still have to remind myself to let things go. You know, I'm a human being. I sometimes mm. get, you know, pulled in and but then we I all do. pull I do. myself out. And so, yeah. You no, know, people think because you talk about it all the time mm. that you should be, a, you know, at a, I was at a more than human level. You know, mm. where you don't get stuck in the human, you know, the humanness. Of, Triggered. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, listening to your words going, yeah, I, sometimes I just need to, you know, I need to like pull my ear or something just to remind myself to uh, pull myself out of a situation. The thing is, it feels better, you know, too. It it's like, you know, we spend so much energy on all these things. And, and I think what, what all these Buddhas and these people that, you know, have been trying to teach us is just in, it be in awareness. You know, awareness of what you're feeling, awareness of, of what's happening around you and awareness of what you're creating. So what am I creating with the thoughts I'm thinking? And what am I creating with these actions and the words? Words are, they call it spelling for a reason. I mean, we're casting spells all day long with, with the words that we say. So, you know, it's really, there's so many distractions from being aware. So, so much of it is, is saying, okay, how many of these distractions do I really need and how many are worthwhile to me and how do they make me feel um, so that we can be more, you know, more aware and, and present. And authentic and living in a mindful way. It's yeah. Present and mindful, two of the same things, you know, two mm -hmm. sides of the same coin. For sure. And but it does, it makes a big difference in life. It makes a dif big difference in attitude. And don't you know, when you feel good inside, it, you just glow on the outside. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And people feel it. You, you, we are constantly um, 
transferring our energy, you know, our energies are, are connected to everyone all day long. So it's really important that we do more than ever. Well, if you walk you know, down the street, you're walking globally. through somebody else's energy field and they're you walking can feel through it. yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for and sure. you're so empathic. You just, you can be a little sponge. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> true. Well, when we're so off, true. I'll give you an exercise. I'll give you something that can help you. But, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, good. but it's, um, but yeah, you do. And, and people do pick up people's debris. I hate to put it that way, but it is. Because if you walk into somebody who's got dark thoughts, you're it's like it, it, it comes on you like a sponge and, and it's interesting though because you say that but it's kind of what i was talking about before because i know what you mean being empathic and how do you deal with that and and a lot of it is again like awareness it's just noticing it and it's interesting how if you notice it they notice it without having to speak a word and it shifts it shifts both of your energy it's really beautiful so it's, it's an interesting exercise it, it truly is. It can be. I know that there's an exercise I like to do when I'm driving and I'll stop next to somebody and they'll be looking at me and I just think, I love you. I love you. Ah, beautiful. You beautiful. know, and, and it just, um, and all of a sudden you just. What does your husband think of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. Oh, oh, believe I'm teasing. me, it took my husband a long time to even try to wrap his mind around what I do. Oh, he's now, like, well, what are you talking about? Now he hits me up for guidance. So, of course, I know. At first they think you're crazy and then they come to you for advice, right? Exactly. Like, oh, oh wait, maybe there's a little something to this. <laughs> But he's actually there. highly intuitive himself, so mm -hmm. he's got a good gut feel for things. He just That's doesn't nice. like to admit to it. Yeah, yeah. And um, what about your your former husband, you know, the, the father of your children? How does he mm -hmm. um, does he wrap his mind around this kind of belief system? I don't well? really know. I don't um, know. I mean, I know he. I, I from what I know, he does yoga, and he's you know into that, and he's certainly into fitness and. And, um, but he's, he, I know he's super hyper intelligent, you know, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kelly, this has been just such a beautiful <laughs> conversation. I'm thank so, you. thank you again for being on the show with me. Oh, thank and, you for inviting me. Um, no, and it's the end, almost the end of the year. It's the holiday season. It's Christmas Eve. I know Eve. already. I know. I'm so excited. Uh, so again thank you so much for everything i want to thank, thank everyone you. at voice america for all you do for me how you get my show on and you work through all the kinks and crinks and crinkles and so thank you and <laughs> merry christmas to you bridget thank you right arm left arm i don't know what i do without you i just so adore you thank you for all you do for me laura rico oh my god what can i say you're just an earth angel. I want to thank you, the listening audience, for taking time out of your day, out of your life to participate in this show. I hope that you're receiving what I'm, I'm sending out in terms of what I'm hoping that you will receive from these conversations from the show. I hope that the holiday season is miracle, miraculous and it's filled with magic and, and wonderful abundance for everyone out there, whether it's Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa or any other holiday I've missed. And I'm wishing you all a happy new year. And I hope your 2021 is phenomenal. And I leave you as always by saying, I send you love. I send you blessings. And I send you gratitude. Thank you so much. You are loved. Take care. <laughs>